I now understand the dynamic of the dollar and not just spending it, but where you spend it. And one of the things about us in our communities, we used to have everything in our communities. In recent years, however, those things have simply gone away and there are no traditional types of stores to shop in. But when you realize how much money you spend and that it leaves your hand and goes completely out of your community to others and voice, you know, boisters their communities and their goals and their efforts. If we go back to what we did and circulate those dollars here among our community, that's what I want to do. The concept of Ujamaa is actually originated in Tanzania, in East Africa, and um, the concept basically is a word that means shared economics. It was a concept that was put into play in the early 1900s when Tanzania became independent and its first president Julius Nyerere began to set up what he called Ujima villages and was looking at ways in which the newly independent country could find ways to become self-sufficient and not look for um, meeting their needs outside of the country and specifically outside of Africa and so it was really about creating these sort of like kinship and family groups and, and, and smaller work groups that um, would cooperate and work together to meet what their needs were. The business that we created together that we called uh, Ujima Collective was founded by a group of black women here in Pittsburgh who wanted to cooperate and share wealth and work. We all were handmade artists and, and, and entrepreneurs and, and activists and folks who cared a lot about our community. We looked to different parts of um, Africa to be inspired and to really look at different examples of ways in which economics, business, and community development were being practiced by African people and specifically African women. And so we pulled forth a lot of um, principles and concepts that we felt like we could use and would be beneficial for us today. We actually work with artists who are local, regional, and global. And so the main point of, of our boutique is to create um, cooperative space. So making sure that artists can have a space that they can call their, their own personally without having this sort of overhead, like independently, that would be overwhelming for any person, but particularly if you're a, a low-income artist. And so it's really about shared space, shared marketing. The Hill District is where we kind of call home. It's our home base. But I think that it's, it's also important that the models that we practice are ones that we can duplicate and replicate. You know, I think that what we do is, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. So of course, what we do has been done before in, in different places. I think that because of a lot of the, the um, failed policies um, around development have impacted African-American neighborhoods so much that, you know, it's been a long time since there was sort of this grassroots community own space like we have in the Hill District with our boutique. But it's important for us to, you know, look at different models and to figure out ways to replicate those models outside of the Hill District and also for us to do business with one another in ways that are mutually beneficial. For instance, last year um, we were able to activate on a relationship that we had been building with a group that's actually in Tanzania and created a, a fair trade contract with a group of sewers in Caragua, Tanzania and created a line of skirts and accessories for our boutique. We use one of our members to help us design those items. 
I designed a skirt, a real simple skirt that has turned out to look well on everybody. It's um, from the Royal Roots Collection, where we traveled to Tanzania and Uganda to have the to shop for the fabric and also to have these skirts sewn by Fair Trade sewers in Tanzania. Um, the skirts are beautiful and they are authentically made African fabrics and authentically sewn by African people. We were able to um, basically do business in a way in which the ripple effect I think is, is, is really great and we're still seeing the, the effect of it now. In five to ten years, I'd see Ujima um, being able to really build on some of our international relationships. So being able to build the relationship that we were able to initiate last year in Caragua, Tanzania and continue to help those women as well as help ourselves grow, grow in business and to be able to produce products that our community wants and needs as well as to be able to really duplicate that model in some other ways and with some other groups in some other places. I think Ujima is a lot of things and so I think the most important part um, that the community should know is that we are the community so you know a lot of times we other ourselves and we other other people meaning that we don't see ourselves in each other and so you know I, I, I want folks to see Ujima as an inspiration but I also want folks to see it as their store and as and as their business and as something that they can call their own I want folks to be able to participate in in it in, in a way that is beneficial to everybody. I think um, the community plays a huge part in the future of Ujima Collective. I mean, we're not who we are without the community. I think that the, the condition of the community and our condition go, go hand in hand um, because we, again, we are who we seek to serve.